Let's uh let's go ahead and dive in here. Chris, they announced the College Football Hall of Fame ballot for 2021 today. And you and I were trying to figure out the best way to go about discussing this because there are 85 names on the ballot. There are 78 players and seven coaches. And there's really not a good way to do this, do this is there? Well, it, it, it's hard because... A, the list is too big, and B, the criteria for getting in and, like, how many votes someone has and what it actually takes is too confusing. Yes. And it really bothers me. I'm not a fan. I love Hall of Fames. I like going to these places. I like looking back at the history of the game from the best of the best. I really hate everyone in the Hall of Fame because they all are just such elitist, pompous pricks. <laughs> and maybe they're not. Maybe they're wonderful people, and they just come across that way because yeah. they have arbitrary rules that don't make any sense to me. Well, let's let's talk about the one that, that I was telling you before we came on no. that I feel is a, a major snub, and that's Howard Schnellenberger. Uh, according to the criteria that they have set for coaches, he will never get in. Schnellenberger is yep. 86 years old right now. And, and he deserves to be in. He won Miami's first national championship. He coached with Bear Bryant. Uh, all that. I mean, he built Miami from the ground up. He built Louisville from the ground up. Like, he left Miami after the national championship in 83 and went to the USFL. That league failed. He came back to college. He built up Louisville uh, to the point where they were winning Fiesta Bowls and whatnot in the, in the early 90s. Um, he built the Louisville program up. And then he leaves Louisville, and he goes and he builds up Florida Atlantic. Like, he he builds teams from the ground up and provides them a foundation. Miami, still a relevant college football team. Louisville, now in a Power 5 league, a relevant college football program. Florida Atlantic, built from a bottom-feeding FCS program up to now. I mean, they've, they've won the, uh, the Conference USA two out of the last yeah. three years. Like, he did some fantastic things in coaching. He deserves to be in, and, and but he never you, will be. You and I do this all the time. I fight this fight constantly when they give somebody his entire resume, and they say, oh, well, he was only really mediocre. Look at his win-loss record. The dude took over a toilet. Yeah, every place he went, he took over a toilet. Yeah. And that, so you got this rebuilding. You got to have these year zeros that just you just can't use to crush your, your, your resume. Yeah, the, the resume says, or the criteria is that if you're a coach trying to get into the Hall of Fame, you have to have a 600 or better winning percentage uh, over your career. Well, Schnellenberger's is only 506. Not great, obviously, but all of that is weighed down by those early seasons where he was trying to build a foundation, build a culture. Yeah, when he took over yes. really bad teams, and it takes a couple of years, you build the new team, you win, you win at an elite level. You move on to the next job. You yep. rebuild that one. And that takes time. And the crazy thing, had he not taken over Florida Atlantic, um, yeah. he would be in the Hall of Fame already. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Had he not taken over Florida Atlantic and done what he did there, you're right. He would have. You got it. So, uh, let's talk about some of the players. I guess the the biggest name on the list is Ray Lewis. And, and we're still trying to figure out how in the world Ray Lewis is not already in the College Football Hall of Fame. Um, it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Like we can't figure out the rules about you know your your playing career being over in the NFL and how many years after and da da da. Now it could be like there is a clause in here about being a good citizen and whatnot. So obviously Ray Lewis had the uh, the legal incident uh, regarding the Super Bowl. The and murder all that charge, you mean? Yeah, I was I was going to stray away from it, but yeah. I mean, I mean, you're saying There's, it like he got caught with a dime bag of weed. Which no, for it was a murder charge. Folks, a dime yeah. bag is what you used to cost ten dollars. <laughs> don't sell those anymore. Uh, the Brown Yeti jumps in on YouTube, said, "Just make your own Hall of Fame." That's what I do, and he definitely makes mine. Yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. maybe we should do that. Maybe we should have the winning cures everything Hall of Fame. I, hey, just put it on the website. Like every year, we set our own list of criteria, which will be very minuscule, and we'll just decide who deserves to be in it and who doesn't. I could get down with that. <laughs> I don't know. Here's the problem. What happens if you like one guy and I don't? Or I like a guy and you 
don't. Well, then they don't get in. I'm okay with that. That's a, <laughs> like it, to get in. You have to win over both of us. Okay, I think that's totally fair, right? Because I'm it, with that, I guess. In in these Hall of Fames, there's a lot of people that vote for the people that are on the list, but not everybody gets enough votes. Yeah, usually you got a lot of voices though. Here you just have two. Yeah. Hey, so yeah, you yeah. basically have to be unanimous or not. I'm good with that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that this year. We'll we'll talk about that. Uh, it seems like a lot of work. It it is. <laughs> it is. But we'll we'll decide. I mean, we can come up with a list of ten every year and decide who gets in, who doesn't. So, um, all right. So let let's talk about some of the names. And I'm I'm just gonna scroll through and just kind of kind of run them up and see what's up. Uh, Champ Bailey. I mean, how in 1998 uh, yep. was was his last year. In I'm not, I'm not sure how guys like him, are, but I also I have no idea how any of this works. Yeah, um, I, I mean, it just, I don't know. Eric Bieniemy, another interesting name, obviously, offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. He was a yep. running back for Colorado. Uh, it, it says he played in two national championships. That's not completely true because they didn't have one versus two back then. Now, Colorado did win a national championship back in 1990. He was part of that team. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of cool. Another one, Michael Bishop. Do you remember him playing for Kansas State? I mean, he was he was another Michael Vick. He was just incredible, and I mean, he he won a lot of games for um for Bill Snyder. So yeah, I I enjoyed that one. Um, I mean, there's just tons of names. Tim Couch was yeah. uh was one that I just I still don't understand. I don't, I don't know how Kim, Tim Couch didn't end. I don't know how Julius Peppers didn't end. Like I like these guys were studs in college football. Oh, 100%. Tim they Couch was studs. He was on that Kentucky team that was Hal Mummy and Mike Leach that brought the air raid really to the SEC. And teams had no idea what to do with that kind of offense back then. Right. And that was the mid 90s, you know. He uh, he was the 1998 SEC player of the year. Um, led the uh, led Kentucky to their first win over Alabama in 75 years that year. He won a Heisman? He did not win a Heisman. No. He uh he finished fourth in Heisman voting. He was the 1998 SEC okay. Player of the Year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jack Del Rio, you know USC linebacker back in '84. Now I don't know how good he was uh, as a uh, college I, player. I think Jack was a pretty good player. I think he was pretty good as well. Uh, Bobby Ingram, wide receiver at Penn State, like he was unbelievable. Uh, he won a national championship for Penn State. Uh, Kevin Falk, your boy from LSU, like that's another one. I mean it. To get into the College Football Hall of Fame, you have to be a first-team um, All-American. And it by whoever, Brown Yeti said, Rio, Rio. Yeah, Jack Del Rio, man. We, we love Riverboat Jack. Tony Franklin uh, from Texas A&M. Dwight Freeney. Dwight Freeney, man. That's it. I remember him at Syracuse. Was he the same year as Ray Lewis? Was that, was that uh, Miami team that loaded? No, Freeney was uh, was Syracuse, and he was two thousand. Oh, that's right. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know why I thought he was on that loaded Miami team. You're right. I just had um, that orange picture in my head. Oh, I understand it. I understand. No, that's right. Robert Gallery, offensive tackle from Iowa. I mean, he was unbelievable, unbelievable uh, as an offensive lineman. Bob Golick, kind of the same thing. Tony Gonzalez from Cal, tight end. Uh, I mean, I remember him just running through people. You know, Al Harris from Arizona State, Marvin Harrison. You know, Marvin Harrison, I think he did most of his damage in the NFL, but he was still lights out at Syracuse. So, at Josh Heupel, I brought that up to you. Like, Josh Heupel was one of the kind of headline guys that uh, that ESPN and, and all these other companies wrote about, and he was pretty far down the list as far as interesting characters to me. Uh, he was the the national championship winning quarterback for Bob Stoops. And, you know, I mean, he was a Heisman Trophy runner-up. Like, he did all kinds of fun things at Oklahoma. He is the current head coach at UCF. So, how he is eligible to get in right now, I don't understand this stuff. I just, I don't I don't get it. Um, but it's still fun to talk about. Sebastian Janikowski is up now. Antonio Langham, Alabama defensive back. Uh, won a national championship in 1992 with Alabama. Ray Lewis, 95 first-team All-American and Butkus Award runner-up. Um, Ed McCaffrey, you know, everybody talks about Christian McCaffrey. His dad was pretty damn good at Stanford. Uh, I mean, just all, all kind of different names on here. Um, 
Ken Norton Jr., Carson Palmer, Julius Peppers, Antoine Randall L., Ron Rivera, Rashawn Salam, Chris Samuels. Like, how these guys are not already in here blows my mind. You know, and I, I have been to the College Football Hall of Fame three times, and it is almost impossible to go through the list of everybody that has made the Hall of Fame. Um, but it's it's fascinating. It is just incredibly fascinating to go through and see, watch all the videos and see all the names that did make it and kind of jog your memory back to when you first became a fan. You know, Darren Sproles from Kansas State, C.J. Spiller, uh, Aaron Taylor from Notre Dame, you know, Troy Vincent from Wisconsin, Roy Williams, Oklahoma, Al Wilson from Tennessee, linebacker, you know, uh, and now we get to the coaches, right? And we'll talk about Bob Stoops for just a minute. Like, I... I I think that's an easy one. I think Stoops is going to get in. And then aside from that, you've got Gary Pinkle. And, I i mean, maybe he deserves to get in. I, I guess he took Missouri to, you know, a few SEC East titles. Uh, didn't really do anything with him in the Big 12. Uh, but he, he built, you know, a pretty good foundation there. Billy Jack Murphy from Memphis. Of course, i got to bring him up, local guy. And, uh, and the one that I really wanted to bring up, Larry Blakeney from Troy is on the list. Now, I don't know that Larry Blakeney makes it, but he was Troy's head coach from 1991 until 2014. That is a long time to stay at one place. And he built Troy up from the ground. And, I mean, he was he was the winningest coach in Sunbelt history, four-time conference coach of the year, uh, had eight conference titles, five in the Sunbelt, three in the Southland, had seven FCS playoff appearances in eight seasons, um, and then led Troy into the FBS. And Troy now, although not a massive school, is still a very respected program. Uh, the Brown Yeti said it's hard to make it because every year there's probably four to five people from each conference that should make it. Yeah, yeah. This is, list is too big. The yeah. list is too damn big. At 85 people on the list is, it's impossible to get through them all. You it's know? supposed to be the Hall of Fame, the great, the very, very great. Not the very, very good, very, very great, which means it's okay to leave people off the list. And and maybe some of these criteria maybe need to be changed a little bit. I mean, the fact that Michael Vick will never be able I don't to like get hard. This. I don't like hardline numbers, okay? Yeah. I don't like hardline rules like you have to be at 600. Because then my question is, is well, does every coach that – finishes with over 600 winning percentage get in because you made that rule. You put that criteria there. So now everybody feels like, well, I got over that rule. So now when am I going to get, it's just a matter of time, right? Like yeah. eventually I'm going to get in because I jumped your hurdle. Well, don't it, put like, hurdles. Don't it, put, it, don't it put changes. hard line numbers in things when you're doing this. this. is why I hate hall of fame committee members and how they put these things together. It, it I just changes like They're what a all guy put together badly. Every one of them have major flaws in how they are put together. It changes like what a guy can do with the end of his career, right? So if Mac Brown was sitting right at like six eleven and thought about maybe coming back to North Carolina, but knew it would take a couple of years to to get it off the ground and running, um, but really wanted to help the school that he came from you know, et cetera, at the end of his career. And he was only going to be there for a few years, but he wanted to get the foundation built back right because they've had troubles or whatever, basically what he's done in North Carolina. Um, if he was sitting right on that threshold, he's already won a national championship. He was already doing really good things. At that point, do you decide, eh, it's not worth it because I really want to make the Hall of Fame? You know, it, it just kind of changes around what a guy can and can't do. And if the Hall of Fame matters to him, then you have to decide, okay, I know I'm going to take some L's here. Uh, if I don't, you know, if I decide not to go help them out, like, how does that reflect on me? You know, it, what what is more important, right? So I, I hate that whole thing. You know, how many times we'll actually run into that? Who knows? But um, but it was fun to look back through the list of people and and see all these names, the the Michael Bishops and the Darren Sproles and the C.J. Spillers and Antonio Langham, everything, you know, Kevin Falk, whatever. Uh, just a, a lot of fun names, a lot of interesting stuff to go through. I cannot wait until we get a chance to go back to the College Football Hall of Fame. So I, you have not gone with me. I don't. We hadn't done that, have we? 
Yeah, I've, I've only gone with other people. So, uh, yeah, we need to do that. We need to do that sometime. We need to go and, and document everything and, you know, talk about it on the show and whatnot. But it, it's, it is 